Hello everyone and welcome back to part 4 of this small tutorial series of working through a car model in Maxwell Studio. So far we've applied materials and seen a couple of ways to render it in a pack shot style. Now I'm going to move on to something which is much more complicated and may take a bit of time and that is how to composite this model into a scene. Now this is by far and away the most complicated way of uh, rendering an object and I don't do it that much. Particularly in product rendering, it's not actually what you really want. Packshot is enough. First things first is take yourself to hdri4u.com. Uh, it used to be HDRI for free, but now they've changed it for you for some reason, but they've kept the name for free up here. Anyway, um, it's run by Maground, and they're a great company, and occasionally they give out some of their HDRIs for free. And this is the current one, Vegas. Uh, two TIFF backplates and a 32-bit HDR dome. Register and log in and get this and I'll start working through it. Here I am in Photoshop and I've opened up the file that ends in 15146.tiff and at the moment it's absolutely huge, we can see down here in the corner 6442 by 4967 pixels. That's pretty huge and I don't, I'm not going to end up with an image that big so I don't need this image to be this big so the first thing first is I need to resize it. At this point it's useful to know the output image size that you're going to finally make. If you don't know that then you're going to run into trouble. But I do, in this case I'm going to go use Full HD 1920 by 1080 So first things first is image, image size, and just pop in 1920 into the width. And I'm going to leave that at everything else like it is. Uh, I might change the resampling to bicubic sharper, best for reduction, and then OK and then I just end up with a smaller version of the image. Now I need to uh, change the aspect ratio, so image canvas size this time, change the units to pixels, and in the height just put 1080. I'm going to leave the anchor in the center, I don't really mind, and then OK. It tells me it's going to clip, yep, don't worry. And then that's my final image. So my car's going to go somewhere in the middle here. The next thing you want to do is just file, save as, and put it somewhere. And then also once you've saved this image, you also need to go to image mode, change it to 32 bits per channel, and then go to file, save as, and save it as a radiance file. You'll see why later on. Okay, so here I am in Maxwell Studio, and first of all I've got to turn off my studio backplane, I don't want that anymore. Um, I'm going to turn on fire so I can see what I'm doing. And then what I want to do is go over to my environment window and change the change the HDR map in the background channel to my, our new one. Okay, and there is our new high dynamic range image. Uh, it's quite a big one, so it might use quite a bit of RAM, but um, hopefully not too much. I'm going to resize my windows just to make things a little bit easier, because I know full well I'm not actually going to be um, using any of these windows, so it's perfectly fine just to resize it so you've got a bit more room to work with. At the moment, um, my reflection, refraction, and illumination channels are all set to the same as background, so they're going to do whatever the background does. Uh, you'll notice my offset is currently set to 90 degrees, and the reason for that is if we zoom out a bit and have a look up, we can see that this um, casino is actually what's in the background of our backplate image. So in other words, if I want to uh, render the car from this angle, I need the background of the HDRI to match the background of the backplate, because otherwise my reflections aren't going to match. So I've offset the background by 90 degrees. If I wanted to do it, for example, from the other side and still have it match, I could just rotate my background, which in this case is about 180. But I'm going to put it back to 90 and render the car from this sort of angle. You don't have to get it exact, but it is useful to get it roughly right. Before I can actually set up my uh, angle of my render, I need to make sure that my camera settings are all right. So if I select the camera and go to Camera Parameters, and then I just need to adjust my exposure so that it matches the backplate image. For this, I'm going to use the file info in Photoshop to get the data from the backplate image itself. So here's the file in Photoshop, and just go to File, File Info. And then in the camera data, you can see uh, what camera it was taken with. In this case, it's a 1DS Mark II. And the important things to notice are the focal length and the exposure. The focal length you can just copy in. 45 millimeters, But for the exposure, it's actually showing up in seconds, and what I need it to be is the inverse of seconds. So in other words, I need to work out on my own 1 divided by 1.3 seconds. 
I've done that and I've found it to be 0.769. It's also important that when you're adjusting the exposure manually, make sure lock exposure is disabled, otherwise you're going to change all of these values when you simply change one. The f-stop is 11 and the ISO is 100, so I just pop those values in. And so Maxwell has calculated that the exposure value for this backplate image is 6.54. Looking at it in the fire window, it does look a bit bright, so maybe I will need to turn the exposure down a bit, but that's something I can do later on. Okay, so now I just need to load in my backplate, but first I want to change the other environment channels to be the background. Not just same as background, but actually to be this HDR image in its own right. So just triple click to select it, and then copy and paste it into the other channels. You shouldn't see any difference in the fire window. And then in the background channel, just open up the map dialog and find where you saved your high dynamic range image of the backplate. Now you'll probably see that it's uh, squished, if you like. It's, it's trying to apply a non-latitude longitude image to uh, an infinite sphere around the scene, so all we do to change that is to enable screen mapping. All that does is to project the image properly and it's not distorted because the dimensions of the image match the resolution of our camera. One thing I do have to do though is change the offset in the background to zero. The next stage in the process is by far the most complicated and that is getting the car to match the backplate. Now sometimes you'll find companies who actually sell a backplate with reference uh, geometry already in it so you can match uh, for example a one meter cube to a one meter cube uh, which is in the backplate, so you'll just make a cube of one meter and get it to match the position and rotation in the backplate so you know your camera is exactly aligned. Some companies even go further and actually give you a file with the camera already set up in the exactly the right position. But with this free example that's not the case, so you literally just have to move the car or move the camera manually with Alt and left click and then Alt Shift and left click. And then you just have to align the car reasonably well Okay, I think that's pretty good, and what I'm going to do now is lock the camera so that I can't accidentally move it. If I need to adjust the exposure, that's something I will be able to do later on in Maxwell Render itself. Now, in order to get a true composited image, you need to actually render two images. It's a little bit annoying, but it's actually a more accurate way to go. So first things first is to import a plane, so file, library, objects, primitives, plane one by one, and import it. Then in your Objects Manager, go down to the bottom, there it is. And then in Object Parameters, turn up the scale. For this scene, a scale of 20 works pretty well. So it's uh, 20 meters by 20 meters. Then you need to give a new material to this floor. So for this material, I'm going to go to the pure white, which I made for my back planes, uh, and right-click and clone. And on the new one, it gets a suffix of underscore one. Double click to open it up, and in the material properties, enable shadow and enable matte. And close it down. And then just apply it to the plane. And enabling the matte option has hidden the plane from the camera, but it's still having an influence on the scene. And by enabling the shadow option in the material properties, when I go over to render options and enable the shadow channel here, like I have done already, I'll get a shadow channel which shows me the shadows on the plane, because only the plane has a material applied to it which has had the shadow enabled. Notice also that I've actually turned off render so I won't get a render of this scene. That should save a bit of time. All I'll have is the shadow channel. I won't have a diffuse and reflection channel. But for this to work, I need the car to be hidden. So in my Objects Manager, just make it a bit bigger, easier to work with, select the bottom object, in this case it's reflectors, and then select the top, and then in Object Managers, just select Hidden from Camera, and enable that. And it looks like everything's disappeared, but trust me it hasn't, because when you click the big fat orange render button, you'll see what I mean. That will take a while to render, so here's one I made earlier. This is what you'll get. It is just the shadows casted by the car on the floor, and we'll use this later, so save it and keep it somewhere safe. Now what I'm going to do is just unhide all of those objects from the camera, enable fire so I know what I'm looking at and in the render options re-enable the render and also enable the alpha 
and get rid of the shadow. And I'm also going to make sure that my output mode is set to separate. And then render that. Okay, so here's my finished render, and indeed it is a little bit too bright, so I need to turn down my ISO a little bit. Um, I don't know exactly how far I'll have to go, but I'll just have to gauge it, really. Without having the back plate in front of me, I can't really gauge exactly how dark I need it, so this is all just kind of a guess. The exposure should match exactly, but in reality that's not always the case. I don't really go I don't really want to go any much more darker than that, so um I'll just make sure that both these images are saved, so all I have to do is click on the save icon and save out the diffusion reflection channel and then hover over the alpha and save that as a nice alpha channel as well. Okay, so here I'm in Photoshop with my back plates uh, resized appropriately and all of my different channels. And one thing I found out that I need to do is actually to change the color space of my back plates. So I simply go to uh, Edit and Convert to Profile and just change it to Working RGB, sRGB, and OK. And now what I can do is duplicate all of my other channels into my back plate. Okay, so here I've got my backplate image with all of my channels duplicated in. What I'm going to do is move my shadow channel down to just above the backplate and change the mode from normal to multiply. That's going to make my shadows appear correctly. And then I'm going to select my alpha layer with my marquee tool selected. Press Command A and Command C to copy it. Hide the layer. Select the diffuse and reflection layer. Add a mask. Go to channels. Make the mask visible. Paste in the alpha layer hide the mask channel, go back to layers, and that's pretty much it. Deselect the pixels, and there you go. Now obviously this isn't perfect, the camera was probably not aligned exactly correct, plus also the render itself is quite pink and orange, and I'll probably use a curves adjustment layer to get rid of that. But for the most part, that is an overview of the process. Okay guys, I've just gone through and added some adjustment layers, and hopefully they make the image a bit, a little bit nicer. Thanks very much for watching, and the next video will be based on a slightly faster but not quite as accurate method of doing this same thing. Thanks very much, see you again soon. For more information about Maxwell Render training at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology, email maxwellrenderbrightoncdt at gmail.com.